So another week comes with another record price of fuel at the pump with unleaded hitting £1.92 per litre and diesel very close to an average of £2 per litre clocking in at £1.99. Now these price rises are significant and charting prices we can see here that from summer of 2020 when the UK was in lockdown the price of unleaded has gone up from around £1.5 per litre. Now the average driver in the UK does around 7,500 miles per year and so the increased price from the summer of 2020 is around £800 more per year to drive the car. Now back in March the Conservative benches were cheering when Rishi Sunak cut fuel duty by 5 pence per litre. Today I can announce for only the second time in 20 years fuel duty will be cut. Yeah. Yeah. Not by one, not even by two, but by five pence per litre. Yeah. Since this, prices have continued to rise. And as VAT is also charged on petrol prices, the Treasury is now taking in 10 pence more than a year ago in VAT. So even with the five pence duty cut, when filling up your tank of petrol, the government is taking more in tax than it was anticipating a year ago. It is criminal not to act. And this is a quick win for the new Chancellor the Deem Zahawi. So let's see what happens. Now some businesses can claim the VAT they spend back, but the average punter has little choice but to suck it up and pay the extra tax. Now the Treasury and all companies do not need to even worry about these price rises killing demand. If we track the changes in prices since January 2020 and the volume of sales, we can see that while the prices have been rising, the volume of automotive fuel has not fallen. This is because unlike some goods in the economy, most journeys are essential, meaning you cannot reduce the amount you use in line with the increase in price. So the road fuel tax windfall to the Treasury needs to be invested back to drivers and action needs to be taken by government now. And let's look to Nadim Zahawi to see what he does.